Good afternoon to all of you. In last lecture, we have seen our pulse modulation system. Now we have to start with noise in PCM, pulse code modulation system. In pulse code modulation system, suppose we are having any signal, <coughs> this is M of T. First of all, we have to decide their limits here it is ranging from plus n mp to minus mp this is first step we are having the signal is given m of t it is which is a continuous signal or this signal we have to decide its upper limit and lower limit upper limit is given as plus mp lower limit is given as minus mp or this one we have to divide with capital L levels. We have to divide this signal M of T which is get bounded between two limits. Upper limit is plus MP, lower limit is minus MP. We have to divide this signal in multiple levels. This capital L gives the number of levels and here this is nothing but a step, step size. This will be given as delta V. Delta V. Delta V is nothing but a step size that is equal to 2 MP divided by L. That is equal to 2 MP divided by L. Here we have to use the rule that is a midpoint approximation. Just for your consideration, we have to consider that this level is 1 hold, this one is 2 hold. Here we are having 1.5. Whatever the signal value, sample value, it might be come here with some value 1.2. We have to do the approximation. It is set to 1.5. Then suppose here we are having the value 1.6. It is set to upper limit. So here we are getting the error which is called as quantization error. So what is the maximum quantization error? Is it the step size divided by 2? Step size divided by 2, this is the maximum quantization error. So write down here, <coughs> amplitude of M of T, amplitude of M of T is limited to the range is limited to the range minus MP to plus MP second point amplitude range amplitude range in bracket minus MP to plus MP is divided into capital L is divided into capital L uniformly spaced intervals uniformly spaced intervals with width delta V is equal to 2 MP divided by capital L in bracket step size next point a sample value is approximated by the midpoint of the interval in which it lies next quantized samples are coded and transmitted as a binary pulse <coughs> so here capital L this will be given as capital L is equal to 2 raised to n. This small n gives the number of bits to represent the quantized sample value. So from this signal, massive signal m of t, we have to assume that this is a sample value which can be represented as m of kts. Is it clear? 
m of t, this is your continuous signal, out of which I have selected one sample value, which is called as m of kts at this point, which is present at this point. After quantization, we will get this value as m of kts cap. This m of kts cap, this is nothing but corresponding sample, corresponding quantized sample right now this m of kts is nothing but corresponding sampled value m of kts is nothing but corresponding sample value at kth time at kth time and this m of kts cap is nothing but corresponding quantized sample value m of kts cap is nothing but corresponding quantized sample value at kth time <coughs> so here we will get error that is q of k t s this is called as a quantization error from this k sample which is given as m of k t s minus m of k t s yeah. this is nothing but your quantization error this is happen at transmitter level at receiver level, we are decoding your signal. We are trying to decode your signal that is M of KTS cap, which is quantized signal. But we are not able to decode exactly, decode exactly. So at receiver point, we will get detection error. So here, by applying here, your, by using your interpolation formula, write down, by using your interpolation formula, This m of t is given as summation over k m of k t s into sync function of 2 pi b t minus <coughs> k pi. Here we have to use the linear approximation this ideal filter, it will give the performance like a sync function. So every sample value, this m of k t s, we can construct m of t by using this sample values, m of k t s, this sample, when it is multiplied with the sync function from your filter, so we will get linear approximation. Similarly, we can construct summation over k here m of k t s cap sync of 2 pi b t minus <coughs> k pi. Here, we are trying to reconstruct your original signal m of t from your sample values. So, sample value, actual sample value from your m of t is get multiplied with performance response of your filter, which will use the sync, sync of 2 pi v t minus pi. Similarly, we can try to get a, reconstruct your original signal m of t from quantized sample values. So, this will get multiplied, quantized sample value is get multiplied with your sync function. Here, we have to give a mathematical model for quantization error. So, quantization error, write down Q of t. <coughs> Here, Q of t is nothing but distortion component. Distortion component 
in reconstructed signal distortion component in reconstruction signal <coughs> this is nothing but m cap of t quantized value minus original signal m of t so here this q of t is nothing but summation over k m cap of t s minus m of t s into sink of 2 pi b t minus k pi. So, here we can say that summation over k in this one q of t is nothing but quantization error quantization error at transmitter point which is nothing but quantized signal m of t cap the signal which is constructed by using quantized sample values minus m of t the signal is reconstructed using sample values their difference is nothing but quantization q of t here t is nothing but for continuous process so here m cap of t is given as this way linear polarization that is m cap of t multiplied with your sink function that is the response of filter similarly we can reconstruct your signal m of t sample values multiplied with your sink function from your filter so at combined we can see that summation just putting these values in bracket m of kts minus m of kts cap quantized value minus sample values is multiplied with your sink of 2 pi bt minus k pi filter response so it is written as q of ts into sink 2 pi bt minus k pi <coughs> Is it clear all of you? Here Q of T is nothing but quantization noise and it is a process. Q of T is nothing but process which is depend on your time T. Here M of T is the continuous signal or we can see that it is a process which depends upon your time T. So over this one we have to find out the power or the mean square value of Q of T. Right on? power or mean square value mean square value of q of t that is quantization noise <coughs> how we are going to calculate mean square value expected value of x square of t this will give us the mean square value here expected value of q square of t so we will get expected value of q square of t that is nothing but q square of t bar which is given as limit t tends to infinity 1 by t integration from minus infinity to infinity <coughs> q square of t dt. So, here limit t tends to infinity 1 by t integration from minus infinity to infinity. <coughs> Sorry, this is from t by 2 to t by 2 here we will get t by 2 to t by 2 square square of t is nothing but summation over k <coughs> q of t s 
into sink 2 pi b t minus k pi square d t. R square q square of k t s that particular value multiplied with sink 2 pi b t minus k pi square. <coughs> sink 2 pi b t minus k pi square. So, here we have to consider for, for this sink function sink of 2 pi b t minus m pi and sink of 2 pi b t minus <coughs> n pi. We are having the two sink functions. One sink function is given as sink of 2 pi b t minus m pi. Second one is sink of 2 b t minus n pi. We are going to multiply these two sink functions. We are going to multiply these two sink functions. So, here their square value integration from minus infinity to infinity sink of 2 b t minus m pi is get multiplied with your sink of 2 b t minus n pi <coughs> d t that is equal to 0 when m is not equal to n and 1 by 2 b when m is equal to n. Here we have to consider this sink of 2 b t minus m pi and sink of 2 b t minus n pi. These are orthogonal to each other. Right down here, they are orthogonal to each other. They are orthogonal to each other. So, they are multiplication, integration over minus infinity to infinity, sink of 2 pi b t minus m pi into sink of 2 b t minus n pi d t that is equal to 0 when they are not equal m is not equal to n m is not equal to n when m is equal to n we will get 1 by 2 pi 1 by 2 pi. So, here in this case when m is equal to n when m is equal to n we will get sink of 2 b t minus k pi square this quantity becomes square here this is equal to n so we will get this square value this is a true this condition is true only for m is equal to n this condition is true only for m is equal to n that means sink of 2 bt minus k pi means we arrange the two sink function this one and this one we will get their square value here m is different n is different just make m is equal to n they are overlap so we will get their square value or this one when we take integration this value becomes 1 by 2b is it clear this value becomes 1 by 2b so from for this equation this integration this will give us value 2b. So, here this limit becomes that is limit t tends to infinity 1 by 2b summation over k q square of Ts. <coughs> Here in this equation we can say that integration and this summation they are linear operators. 
so we can write down limit t tends to infinity 1 by t summation over k that is q of kts and here summation minus t by 2 to t by 2 sink of 2 pi bt minus k pi square dt <coughs> minus k pi square dt the value of this sink integration over minus t by 2 to t by 2 sink of 2 pi bt minus k pi square dt this value becomes 1 by 2b this value becomes 1 by 2b b is nothing but the width bandwidth so quantization error mean square value of quantization error for pcm is given as limit capital t tends to infinity 1 by 2 bt summation over k q square of kts this is called as average or mean square of quantization error is it clear <coughs> here mainly we are interested to find out the output signal to noise ratio just compare this situation with your previous analog signals in previously we have to find out the output signal to noise ratio output signal to noise ratio is the function of input signal to noise ratio and some parameters in am bandwidth is the problem in angle modulation we are getting a better bandwidth that is for wide band fm wide bandwidth infinite bandwidth for narrow band fm small bandwidth their problem is gamma threshold that is input threshold value as we are increasing the bandwidth this threshold value increases it shift towards left or right this value is increases similarly we have to formulate the output signal to noise ratio for this pcm digital communication system pulse code modulation system here mainly we are having the two sources for your noise one source is from your transmitter this is nothing but quantization noise sample value is get quantized here maximum quantization is nothing but half step size delta v divided by 2 this is the maximum quantization size our job is we have to formulate this quantization so quantization noise q of t here this quantization noise is given it is nothing but summation over the k for all sample values k is ranging from minus infinity to plus infinity we are selecting any sample value which is quantized q of kts q of kts is nothing but gives the difference between quantized sample values m of kts cap minus m of kts that is original sample value the difference between them this is true for all sample values so here we will get a quantized minus actual that is your quantization error q of kts is get multiplied with your sink 2 pi bt minus k pi minus k pi that means this is the output from your filter as we are multiplying with your sink function that means we are analyzing this quantization error at receiver point of view i am standing at the receiver point of view and just looking received signal in this received signal mainly we are having the two errors first one is quantization error this quantization error is created at transmitter point at transmitter point at receiver point i am just trying to reconstruct your original signal i am just taking approximating your m of t in first case i am getting this quantization error this quantization error is, no, is nothing but my original signal m of t it will give the sample value m of kts at particular time k this sample value is get quantized 
just assume that the sample values the, gives the value 1.3, 1.3 hold. Due to this quantization, this value is increases. Assume that this quantized value is 1.5. So 1.5 minus 1.2. This is the quantization error for that particular sample value. For that particular sample value. So at here receiver point, we are constructing your signal that is Q of T. Actually, this is your quantization noise in your message signal M of T. That is Q of T is equal to summation. I am collecting all these values that is Q of KTS. The quantization error at each sample multiplied with your response of your filter. Here we have to consider it will give us linear approximation. So we have to use a sync function filter which will give us the sync function in time domain that is sync of 2 pi bt minus k pi. Now over this noise which is a process of time which depends upon your time over this one we have to find out it's a mean square energy or power. This mean square power is calculated by expected value of Q square of T. Are you got it? Expected value of Q of T. This will give us here, this will give us N0, capital N0. Our job is we have to find out S0 to N0. That is a noise level at output. So here to calculate this one expected value of q square of t that is equal to q square of t bar this will give the mean square value is equal to limit capital t tends to infinity 1 by 2 t integration over minus t by 2 t to capital t by 2 2 q square of t dt here when we are putting we will get this sync function its square value sync of 2 pi bt minus k pi square dt that means these are the two sync functions they are just shifting their square value when exactly m is equal to n m is equal to n we will get square value area under this one from minus infinity to infinity integration for this one is given as 1 by 2 b when m is equal to n. For other case, m is not equal to n. Other case, <coughs> 0. Other case, 0. So here, this integration and summation, they are linear operator. So we are just change the sequence. So limit capital T tends to infinity 1 by 2 t. Summation over k, q of kts. These are the summation of all, sam all sample and quantize their error that is quantization error q of kts summation over this sync function this sync function when we will get a square value that means k is equal to m is equal to n this will give us 1 by 2 b so here finally this mean square that is capital n is equal to expected value of q square of t is equal to limit capital t tends to infinity 1 by 2 b into t summation over k that is of q square of kts. This is the power over your quantization noise. <coughs> so write down sample value is approximated by midpoint of sub interval of sub interval of the height delta v is equal to 2 mp divided by capital L is equal to 2 mp divided by capital L. Therefore, maximum quantization error, <coughs> therefore, maximum quantization error is in the range of maximum quantization error is in the range of delta v divided by 2 comma delta v divided by 2. 
when we consider this is a step size here that is delta v we have to use the midpoint approximation so here this is delta v divided by 2 and delta v divided by 2 so in your pcm the range of quantization noise is in minus delta v divided by 2 to delta v divided by 2 so the mean square quantization error mean square quantization error So for this noise which is having the range minus delta v divided by 2 to delta v divided by 2, its mean square quantization error that is q square bar is equal to 1 by delta v integration or minus delta v divided by 2 to delta v divided by 2 q square. So, this is given as delta v square divided by 12. So, q square bar is equal to mp square 3l. And this m cap of t m of t plus <coughs> q of t s not m square of t so output signal to noise ratio is equal to 3 l square m square of t bar So quantization error for the PCM where noise is generated for the step size divided by 2. So range for this noise is from minus delta v divided by 2 to delta v divided by 2. Or this one we have to find out the mean square value for this noise which is given as mp square divided by 3l square. mp square that means the peak value maximum limit from minus mp to plus mp divided by 3l square l is nothing but number of levels so this is the mean square value for this quantization noise for your pcm here m cap of t that is equal to m of t plus q of t so for your output signal at output i am expecting m of t at output of your receiver of your PCM, finally we are expecting M of T that is your original signal, continuous analog signal M of T. The power over this signal is given as M square of T that is expected value of mean square value of message signal M of T. This is nothing but expected value of M square of T. <coughs> Second movement about your origin, this will give the mean square value. So, output signal to noise ratio, output signal to noise ratio that is equal to 3 into L square, L is nothing but number of levels into M square of T bar that is expected value or power of massive signal M of T divided by MP square. This is the output signal to noise ratio for your PCM. It depends on number of levels. See so, yeah, can we increase the output signal to noise ratio? Yes, we can increase. 
it depends upon your number of levels as we increase the number of levels we have to divide the message signal into multiple levels then what happen as we increase the number of levels we are increasing the number of steps as we are increasing the number of steps step size decreases delta v decreases as delta v decreases the range that is delta v divided by 2 is also increases finally as we are suppressing this q of t quantization noise output signal to noise ratio increases <coughs> similarly we can increase the output signal to noise ratio which is directly proportional to m square of t bar that is expected value of m square of t as we are increasing the message signal m of t it's a power as we are increasing the power of your input signal m of t we will get better output signal to noise ratio what is mean by increasing the power that means we are improving the input signal to noise ratio at transmitter point this is one way second thing this mp <coughs> we are having the inversely proportional as we are increasing this mp output signal to noise ratio is decreases what is this mp it is a maximum limit minus mp this signal is limited for these two signals minus mp to plus mp this is the range of your input signal when we increase this range they are exactly to your message signal m of t so we will get better output signal to noise ratio this is regarding your digestion noise see here as we are going to say that output signal to noise ratio is directly proportional to your input signal to noise ratio or we can say that it is directly proportional to your power of your message signal m of t and we are having the uniform quantization we are having in uniform quantization that means this is a true for every sample value <coughs> same quantization ratio that is output signal to noise ratio that is snr is available available for all the levels all the levels of your message signal see here suppose we are having this message signal <coughs> We are having this message signal. For this message signal, we will get output SNR. For this value, same output SNR is present. For this value, same output SNR is present. For this peak value, same output SNR is present. same output snr is present same rule is applicable for all the amplitude levels of your message signal m of t the problem is we are applying same output signal to noise ratio for all message signals here these signals from this message signal m of t power level, level is small amplitude level is small it will give us same output signal to noise ratio and this is applicable for this one is same same rule is applicable that means we are using uniform quantization we are using uniform quantization so can we use non uniform quantization yes we can use the non uniform quantization so for this one here output signal to noise ratio is directly proportional to m square of t is directly proportional to m square of t from this conclusion we can say that same rule same output signal to noise ratio is applicable for all the levels of all the amplitude levels from your message signal so we can use non uniform quantization so write down non uniform quantization <coughs> for smaller amplitude share
for smaller amplitude for smaller amplitude we have to apply smaller step size as small step size output signal to noise ratio increases quantization noise or noise decreases so our job is we have to apply smaller step size for smaller amplitude signals we have to apply larger amplitude we have to apply larger step size for larger amplitude signal so here for this signal <clears throat> those signals which are having smaller amplitude range we have to apply smaller step size the signals which are corresponding to smaller amplitude of your message signal we have to apply smaller step size similarly here smaller step size as the step size is smaller its range that is delta v divided by 2 its midpoint is smaller so we will get better signal to noise ratio <coughs> for the signals or the amplitude from your signals which are having the larger amplitude we have to give larger step size delta v we have to give larger step size delta v as delta v is larger quantization error is larger output signal to noise ratio becomes smaller so this is happen with your non uniform quantization so for this non uniform quantization write down for smaller <coughs> so for non uniform quantization we have to use compressor then after we have to use uniform quantization to get non uniform quantization we have to first of all compress the signal compress all these sample values then after we have to apply uniform quantization so here at output y on your vertical axis we are having the output y output of your compressor and here on your horizontal axis we are having the normalized message signal normalized message signal which are normalized with your peak amplitude mp so on your horizontal axis we are having ratio of m divided by mp this is nothing but normalization of sample values from your message signal so here we will get this for delta m delta m this is nothing but the incremental change incremental change in your message signal here for these two values this is nothing but your <coughs> delta m incremental change in your sample values delta m for this delta m we will get this output y for this delta m we will get this output y so write down first for smaller for smaller delta m we will get larger delta y for smaller delta m we will get larger delta y this will give us larger number of steps larger number of steps this will give us smaller step size this will give us smaller step size second for larger delta m for larger delta m this will give us smaller delta y this will give us smaller delta y this will give us less number of steps 
and this will give us larger step size. This will give us larger step size. Are you got it? This is the role of compressor. When this delta M is smaller, delta M, delta M is smaller, this is regarding your small amplitude. For this one, we will get larger delta Y. That means we are having the number of levels, intervals, L increases. L, as L increases, number of steps are increases. As number of steps are increases, our step size decreases. So, here less quantization error is present. As we are moving towards this one, that means we are increasing the amplitude of your message, that is normal as M by MP. For this larger delta M, we will get smaller delta Y. As delta Y is smaller, there are less number of levels. As the less of less number of levels, step size increases. As step size increases, our quantization error increases. So to formulate this one, we are having basically two laws. Well, first one is mu law, and second one is your A law. This compression gives two laws. This y, that is one by n, one plus mu. 1 plus mu m divided by mp for this ratio 